Imagine that you have an issue with lots of cellular inflammation. So you go and you take ibuprofen. That doesn't exactly make sense, right? Like we know ibuprofen is an anti-inflammatory. It's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. But most of us know that that's not going to solve our inflammation issue, right? It's because that's dealing with cyclooxygenase enzyme, complicated stuff, but it's more isolated. But the point is, is you have a fundamental understanding of that, right? So when we look at aging, when we get older, when we look at longevity, and we look at the increase in inflammation that occurs with that, it doesn't make sense to just try to combat the inflammation. It makes sense to combat the core source, right? Because when you look at senescent cells and how they secrete these specific inflammatory compounds, there's ways to target those senescent cells specifically with what are called senolytics. So let's dive in. After today's video, I put a link down below for 10% off of urolithin A from Timeline Nutrition. Urolithin A is what is called a postbiotic. It's something that is extracted, typically in this case from pomegranates, and it's a compound that induces what is called mitophagy. So it encourages the mitochondria to essentially go through a recycling. Now, MitoPure, which is the patented version of urolithin A, has a lot of clinical studies published on it. Very legit stuff. I've talked about it with Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. If you're looking at trying to get sort of the, I guess you could call it the autophagy of the mitochondria, mitophagy, and improve mitochondrial health, potentially better aging, all these things, urolithin A is probably on the forefront when it comes down to the emerging promising compounds. Really interesting stuff. Not to mention there is evidence to support that it can help protect against a visceral fat accumulation as well, which is hugely important. So that link down below gets you 10% off of Timeline's urolithin A. At the very least, at least check out the link and read a little bit more about it because it's not just Thomas DeLauer talking. This is very real stuff. So link is below this video in the top line of the description. So a senescent cell secretes something called senescence-associated secretory phenotypes or SASPs. These SASPs are very problematic because they are pro-inflammatory. What happens is a senescent cell is not inherently good or bad. Well, actually it's good and bad. What happens is as we get older, we produce these additional cells called senescent cells that have properties of regular cells, but they also lack the ability to replicate and they don't have all function. They're like a shell of a person, right? They're like, if you were to just take a shell of yourself that could barely do superficial things, but didn't have any actual depth. That's kind of the way these cells are. So they're helpful, but they do secrete inflammatory compounds. Now, when we're younger, we have the ability to neutralize these cells when they've done their job. We also have the ability to deal with the inflammation that comes from them. It's called inflammaging. It's kind of a blend of the words inflammation and aging. Inflammaging. It's a very real thing. There's also what are called damage-associated molecular patterns, or DAMP. Damage-associated molecular patterns are when we have basically fragments, broken DNA, that actually trigger the immune system and these inflammation responses. So with senescent cells, you need to look at what are called senolytics. Now, there's some new research that came out in Nature Communications just here in 2023 that's pretty fascinating. This study utilized machine learning, AI, one thing that AI might be good for, to take a look at over 4,000 different compounds, both artificial and natural, to find which ones had true anti-senescent properties or true senolytics. Now, remember, you don't want to neutralize or stop senescent cells when you're younger. You want to do it as you're already aging. So I would say mid-30s to 40s. The one that seemed to be one of the most potent was actually directly out of ginkgo biloba. We're talking about a compound called ginkgetin. Now, ginkgo is cheap and it's something that's highly effective for this. It also has other properties. So you could take it when you're younger and just increase your dose as you get older. It's really interesting how powerful this compound is. It's literally probably the most powerful natural compound for senolytics right now. The next one is oleandrin, which you can get in supplement form if you go on Amazon. Oleandrin is a toxic plant. I've talked about this in other videos, but you know, our horses and goats, we had to keep them away from oleander growing up because it would kill them. It's super toxic. But apparently sometimes things that are toxic can actually help us, right? Hormesis, right? Just like maybe some plant toxins are actually good for us, just like oleander might be good for us. So that's one that you might want to take in more of a supplement form. Another one is called periplosin. 
Periplosin comes from a specific bark. This might be the most sketchy one. And I say sketchy because if you overdo it, there's a lot of claims of people feeling nauseous, getting headaches, because it is another plant toxin that essentially comes from a bark. Now with this, it actually has anti-inflammatory compounds of itself. It's in a lot of research models right now, and we don't even know where it's going to be in a few years. So much so that it's so effective that it might end up getting put into a category where it's used in a pharmaceutical setting and you can't get your hands on it anymore. That's how potentially powerful it is. I encourage you to do your own research on it because most of the data is going to be mechanistic, some rodent model stuff, but it's still very promising. Again, not something you'd want to take unless you're, you know, a little bit older anyway. Now let's talk about two other compounds that came from a study published in Mechanisms of Aging and Development. Now the first one is one that is probably right now as time of filming probably my favorite supplement in the longevity space and that's quercetin because quercetin has performance properties like to help with recovery it has immune properties it has all kinds of great stuff not to mention it's a powerful senolytic, but it's one that you could also take when you're younger. So it's a flavonoid that can help promote sort of these proper stress response in your body, alpha-FOXO3, and ultimately activate what's called the NRF2 pathway, which is an anti-inflammatory pathway. So it's anti-inflammatory from the top down, plus it's an anti-senolytic. So when you're younger, it can help aid in potentially muscle soreness and help you feel a little bit better. When you're older, it does that, plus is a senolytic compound that stops the cells from producing too many of these zombie cells or these sort of clone cells. The next one is curcumin. Now we all know curcumin. Curcumin has been known to be an anti-inflammatory, but with that research, it's still confusing, right? We don't know like how potent it truly is. There's a lot of studies on it, but we are starting to see that there's powerful effects when it comes down to being an antioxidant, which is different from an anti-inflammatory. But when we see it as a synolytic, it does seem to take an effect in rodents and mechanistically, but it takes more time. So we're almost wondering if curcumin is more of an adaptogen that actually helps the body adapt the longer that you take it. Because a lot of times when you look at like like cuisine, you look at these cultures that consume a lot of curcumin, they're also consuming cumin and some of these other things that have other properties. So it's like their entire lifestyle is very adaptogenic and helps them heal and stuff. And that's interesting because you get a lot of people that are living to very old ages in those cultures and regions. So it makes you wonder, right? So these five compounds are super, super effective. Now, something that I've talked about before, one of the best things that you can do when it comes down to like senescent cells is focus on your exercise and focus on proper nutrition in your 20s and 30s and don't start messing with this stuff until you're in your late 30s, early 40s because you do not want to stop cell senescence you want to encourage it when you're younger because it helps you. You just want to control it and reduce the inflammation when you are older. So as always, keep it locked. You hear my channel. See you tomorrow.